laboratory experiments provide valuable data that can show how real-world problems can be solved. However, they are often limited by assumptions that do not pertain to real life. In this experiment, we will show how excellent data can be readily obtained on a real-world system in the field. By measuring the deceleration of a freewheeling bicycle, we can estimate the power required to keep the bicycle moving at a given speed, against inclination of the road, rolling friction, and air drag. The same physics can be applied to all manner of transportation modes, which helps us understand how much energy it takes us to move a person or an object from A to B. The experiment consists of pedaling a bicycle equipped with a speedometer up to a certain speed, 25 km an hour in this case, and then letting the bicycle freewheel down to the lowest speed at which you can still balance it. While you do this, record the speed of the bike measured by the speedometer using a video camera. Later on, we will use this data to estimate the deceleration of the bike, and thus the force of the bike as a function of velocity. By modeling this force in terms of the inclination of the road, rolling resistance, and air drag, we can extract important physical data like the coefficient of rolling resistance and the drag coefficient of the bike and rider. Other local information like the inclination of the road and the wind speed will also be obtained. The forces acting on the bicycle as we let it come to a stop are the air drag created by the wind and the bicycle speed, the rolling resistance between the wheels and the road, and the force of gravity if we are on an inclined path. With this diagram, we can see what forces are acting on a freewheeling bicycle as it slows down. It is worth mentioning that the angle of inclination is exaggerated, so it's easier to show the components. We can model the various components of the forces as follows. The weight W, which is equal to mg, has a component parallel to the road W bar parallel, which is equal to mg sine theta. m is the mass of both the rider and bicycle, and g is the constant of gravity. The normal force N, which is equal to mg cos theta, is perpendicular to the road. The rolling resistance Fr, which is equal to mu r n, where mu r is the coefficient of rolling resistance between the wheels and the road. Finally, the air drag D, which is equal to 1 half rho ACD V plus or minus u square, where rho is the density of air, A is the cross-sectional area against the wind, also known as the frontal area of the bicycle and rider, and CD is the coefficient of drag between the bicycle and rider with the air. U and V are the speeds of the wind and bicycle respectively. Once we sum all of the forces parallel to the road, we can get the total force being exerted on the bicycle. There is no net force perpendicular to the road or else you would fly. For this equation to work, V must be greater than U and mu R must be greater than sine theta. Therefore, Try to do this experiment on a calm day in a relatively flat road. If you travel uphill and against the wind, the plus or minus at the beginning and end of the equation are both plus. This explains that W parallel is in the same direction as the friction between the wheels and the road, that is, against you. Also, if the wind is traveling against you, it exerts a force in the same direction the air drag does, which is also against you. Once you start your second trip, which is in the opposite direction, these signs change because now W parallel and the wind force are acting in favor of your motion. Plainly, if we don't know theta, we cannot extract mu r, as they both depend on the weight. Similarly, if we don't know u, we cannot extract cd. However, if we take two sets of data in opposite directions, assuming the wind speed stays constant, we can separate out the local effects of the road and wind and get at the important physical data about the bicycle itself. Once you have recorded your data, you can do a chi-square analysis in order to create a best fit line and function that will approximate the expected data to the experiment. In order to do this, you can use the equation of sum of forces and vary the values of mu r, theta, cd, and the wind velocity u until you get a decent representation of the experiment with the formula. The value of rho can be kept constant to be the density of air, which is 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed and A is an approximate frontal area of the bicycle and rider, 0.7 meters square in our case. There is an easy way to do this with Excel. Once you have added all the chi-squares, which you want to minimize, you can open the solver add-in in Excel and minimize this sum by changing the values of mu r, theta, 
CD and U. The solver will then give you approximate values that you can confirm. You need to remember that the sum of chi-square depends on the difference between the expected forces given by the equation and the actual forces in the experiment. To get the actual forces in the experiment, you only need the time and speeds recorded with your camera. Once you lay them out in a table, you can get the values of acceleration by dividing the difference of speed values by the time difference between two recordings. Then, you just multiply the values of acceleration with the mass of rider and bicycle, and you'll get the actual force at that given time. For our experiment, we use the chi-square analysis and play with the values mentioned. Getting mu r to be 0 0.005, theta to be negative 0 0.06 degrees, cd to be 1.25, and u to be negative 1.1 meters per second. These values look decent for the conditions that we had in our experiment. Thus, by recording experimental data, we can approximate constants in the formula, which can then help us to measure hypothetical results. Since we have all the constant values, we can now approximate what would the force exerted on the bicycle be if it was going at 1, 10, or 100 meters per second without having to repeat the experiment. It's worth mentioning that you can also calculate the power at any time by multiplying the force and speed. For our experiment, we got a maximum power of around 200 watts when we were going at 25 kilometers an hour. And the professional cyclist can do about 400 watts of mechanical power, which occurs at around 33 kilometers an hour in our bike. Therefore, we can say that our bike is not built for racing.